Right, we are live. Good evening, everyone who's joining another episode of A Drink with Charit. And it's my absolute pleasure and honor to host another very versatile human being. Unbelievable, I would say. I was I was fortunate enough, you know, to to play under him when he was my my captain at Anand. He was my skipper. So I'll be calling him Skip throughout the show. That uh I was told when I was a kid that, you know, the very, very rarely that, you know, you, they, I was brought up with this, this uh, idiom, I would say that, you know, jack of all trades, master of none. But you have proved that, you know, that uh, that saying is all wrong. Skip, you know, that, you know, you are a man with, you know, many talents, versatile. You, you are an economist, entrepreneur, uh, past cricketer, public speaker, brilliant cricketer. Um, what else can I say in a past chairman of BOI, you know, I can, you know, whole history of things we have done, chief consultant to, uh, Sampath Bank, you know, that's the, then you were the founder member of Asia Capital, basically nothing, you know, this man has not done, you know, it's unbelievable the, the achievements you have had in life. So I don't want to, without further ado, you know, that, you know, we all, we spoke about, you know, his achievements in life, uh, skip. It's great to have you on the show and offline we spoke, you know, that's, you know, that's uh, when you, when you look back to me as, you know, growing up, you know, you as my senior and as my hero, how as a human, did you, were you born with all these talents or were you as a self-made man or you work towards it or what is a success, you know, and what's your word to people who are listening, how to become such a human? Over to you, sir. Thank you, Sharit, for inviting me and good evening to everyone or good morning wherever in the, in the world you are. Thanks again. Um, let me answer that question this way. Yes, I've been fortunate to be born with a few talents and of course, very understanding parents, mentors and teachers who help nurture those talents. And I want to tell you one thing you called me a jack of all trades but there is something I've learned in life and that is at a given time you can excel only in one thing so I must say that up to the time I sat for my O-levels I managed somehow to carry on with my studies and my cricket both but my O-level results would have been a lot better had I not been playing cricket the whole year first 11 under 15, under, under, under 16 etc and then I had to make a choice whether I would actually sit for my A-levels and pass or go on the American Field Service Scholarship that I did, fail my A-levels and Captain Ananda in the 50th big match. So <laughs> I chose to actually intentionally fail my A-levels so that I could um, captain in the Ananda College 50th big match because when I went on AFS in 78, I had already lined things up to go back to university. So I had to make a choice. And, and the reason also, if I were to fast forward to 1992, when I came back from university and took cricket back again, I retired at 32 in 92, simply because we were starting a new investment banking company. And I knew that I couldn't excel. I was Sri Lanka A captain in cricket and running a full-time business. So I thought I have to now focus on the business because cricket didn't pay at that time. I, and, and I, I want to tell you an interesting story. Um, it was actually Champika Ramanayaka had something to do with my uh, quitting cricket because uh, when Champika started cricket at the Tamil Union, uh, we, uh, he came and stayed at my parents' house because, you know, he was coming from Gaul. He didn't have his own place. And then at a Tamil Union match somewhere in 1991, he said, Tilanaya, mage banku laksa because he was playing, playing national cricket. Mm -hmm. So I scratched my head and said, Whoa, I'm senior manager at, at Sampath Bank or a manager at Sampath Bank. I might be having only 150,000 in my bank account. <laughs> and that's, that really prompted me to quit cricket and become an entrepreneur. So in a sense, if there's a lesson to be learned, pursue your hobbies. Music has been a hobby. Cricket for a certain period was not a hobby. It was very, I was very serious about the game, but I had to then quit and then focus on my studies. So I focused on that and, and everything else became something that helped me maintain life balance, so to speak, because I always believe, and I'll say this and stop, that in life, 
you must maintain both right brain, left brain balance, as well as the inner peace balance. And I've found creative outlets to, whether it's get over stress or be more, more, more creative. Uh, and, and, and that's what I've done in life. I have uh, chosen, I've walked away from very lucrative jobs because I didn't want to handle the pressure or I wanted to spend more time with my family. So, so you're, what you're saying is basically, yes, you know, you had the desire to play cricket. You're an outstanding cricketer, Captain Ananda, and uh, went on to get a hundred, you know, just in, in one of the big matches, only very few Anandians, you know, did that. And you went on to captain the 50th uh, big match. And yeah, it's, you know, like one guy here sent me a picture that, you know, see whether I can show in the stream that uh, the old Swernia bat. There you go. Tulan Vijay Singh, captain, Senaka Ekanayaka. Rohit Pereira, Brendan Kurupu, yours truly, Hashim, Heva Vitarna. That was the lineup. That was our big uh, 50th uh, big match. I can see Upul Gamage captain, Naland, Shami Silva. Formidable, you know, lineup. You know, that's you know all. You know that, and then suddenly you went on to play. Uh, you played club cricket, right? You know, but you played for Tamil Union, and I didn't realize the fact that you captain Sri Lanka A, and then you just disappeared. You know, just uh, that that's that's the last we heard of Tilan Vijay Singh. Huh? So you explain the reason why you gave up cricket. Is it because of, you know, that? Uh... Yes. So, so in 79, after captaining Anand, I received a scholarship to, to pursue university studies in the US. And many people discouraged me, including Mr. Kili Rajamahendran, because I had done a three months worth of work at Maharaja's. And he said, don't go, Tilan. In another two years, we are going to get test status or three years. You have to open betting with Siddharth. Um, but I said, sir, there's no certainty. There's no livelihood in cricket. My father is very keen that I get myself educated. So I didn't touch a bat for five and a half years, uh, Charit. Uh, and then I came back to Sri Lanka in 84. Coincidentally, I bumped into Sunil Vettamuni. And Sunil told me, and, and nothing gets me going uh, other, you know, compared to a challenge. I'm, I'm a very competitive person that way. I compete internally, I compete externally. But Sunil told me, Tilan, five and a half years, you haven't touched a bat, forget it. You know, your peak, you have, you have you know, spent time in the, in, in the US. So I, I thought to myself, I'm going to prove Sunil wrong. And I went and at that time, there were not too many gyms. I went to the gym, started training. And I decided to go back to the same club that I had played as a schoolboy cricketer um, and rejoined Tamil Union and played Donovan Henry, Division 2. Believe it or not, Charit, I don't know what it was, whether it is the, the hard training that I did, mental training. Uh, and by the way, I had studied how tennis players train. Uh, Martina Navratilov, I read books. The first two matches I played after five and a half years, I got 200s. And immediately I was promoted to the Sarah team. And then three years later, I became uh, best batsman in, in, in club cricket, captain Tamil Union, and got selected to captain the Sri Lanka A team. So I was also in the national pool in 91, 92. And someone who played under me, Arjuna Rantung in 79, was then the captain. So I got to the final 25. But in 91, when the selectors met, I believe they made the right choice. For the opening berth, there were two candidates. Uh, we were both averaging over 60 in that season, Chandika Atrutsinga and myself. Chandika being eight years younger than me or somewhere thereabouts, got the opening berth in the Sri Lanka national team. The selector said, let's give, give Tilan the next best spot and made me captain of the Sri Lanka A team against matches against England that was captained by Nasser Hussain, Pakistan, Mohin Khan. So, and then, uh, I'll say, you know, why did I stop cricket? Uh, I actually had a very good season in the 92 season. Um, we were playing at Kettarama, the inter-club day-night final, 50 over final. Aravindar Silva was captaining NCC. Tamil Union was captained by Chandra Vijayman. We won the match and I got run out, uh, running for my 50th run. And I then realized, uh, Charit, that we, because we had just started a business, Asia Capital, and, and I was a shareholder, that the level of fitness required for 50 over game was such that I could not hold on a full-time job and focus on cricket. I quit the very next day. I said, I cannot run a business and, and, and play cricket at the level that 50 over cricket had evolved at that time. And now the level of fitness required is even greater with yeah. the advent of 2020 cricket. So that's really the reason why I left cricket, 
came back into cricket, left cricket again. And now, final chapter, when I turned 60, just in the middle of COVID, um, Nada Anandi and Mahesh Di Soja said, Tilan, can you come and join the Masters Cricket Association? I said, I haven't touched a bat for 28 years. So, because I had time on my hands, after a gap of 28 years, I started training for the over-60 World Cup in Australia, got selected, uh, pulled muscles, um, it was tough. Again, competing with myself for the sake of being fit and, you know, having that level of vibrancy as you, as you reach old age. But of course, I didn't make the tour because I got COVID one week before the uh, Australia tour last, uh, last year. But I am training now for the over-60 World Cup in India in March next year. And I can tell you, honestly, I'm thoroughly enjoying it, especially one or two daily news matches that I play against some 20-something-year-olds who, you know, uh, uh, you know, make the ball fly, fly past you. One message for those who are my age or older or younger, age is just a number. This human body and human brain is an amazing piece of equipment. You nurture it. You train it the right way. I'm just amazed and touch wood, I'm touching wood here that at, at my age, I can, whether I can run or bat or what have you and face 25 year olds who have just come out of school cricket. So don't ever forget that, that, that your body is a temple and, and so, is your, so is your mind. Well said, Skip. You know, it's interesting that you said that, you know, you are training for this, you know, 60, the World Cup next year in uh, in India. I got an invitation. I was a little skeptical whether I should uh, pick up a bat again. I haven't touched a bat for a while. And now that I know that you know you are training, I probably you know just you know for the old time's sake, I probably please. you know just to come and throw a few balls you at the nets. You know next time when you train, yeah. please give me a shout. I'll be there. You know okay. would love to do that. Okay, great. H having said that. You know that you know you are you know, I mean you look you captain out and under 14 under 16s you know whatever under 19s. Are there any people you really like to mention that your mentors, your coaches, that you know people who guided you along the journey and uh, who made you what you are today? You know any any names that you like to mention? Yes, uh, definitely, uh, Charit. And these names contributed to Anand the cricket, not just cricket for Tilan Vijay Singer. So when I was um, 12 years old, my coach was P.W. Pereira. I was playing under 13 cricket. And my father, who was an engineer, was very good friends with Ramsey Vettamuni, who was also an engineer. And uh, I overheard a conversation saying um, that they were talking about me. And my father, after he hung up the phone, said, Puta, Ramsey Vettamuni asked me with that, with what sort of cricket you are playing and wants, wants me to take you for, so that he can have a look at you. So we go to the Vettamuni house down Park Road cement laid on, you know, where all the Vettamuni brothers practiced. Sunil Vettamuni threw, I can't remember whether it was Sunil Lomitra, threw the tennis ball at me. Siddhartha was watching. Ramze asked me to play a few strokes. After a few seconds, a few strokes, he shook his finger. Puta, this is not going to work. Foundation of batting, he said, is your stance, back lift and grip. He changed all three. Now, I, I was feeling very awkward, right? Because, you know, the, the entire fundamentals of my batting was changed by Ramsey. And then he started quoting from this book. And I was happy to note that Sunil also mentioned the same book, C.B. Fry's book. And then kept on throwing the ball. And he told my father, bring your son every Saturday for the next three months uh, till he becomes comfortable with his new technique. We did that. And Charit, within a few months, I was playing for Slevan Cricket at 13. And that's where I have to give my thanks to Priyanka Seniviratna, who... Uh, recognize the fact that I was scoring runs and came to my grade 8 class. I was still wearing shorts to school and said, you know, nine players from the 72 team have left. Ilan, we, we have shorter players. Please report to practice. So, yes, I did have a great season at 13 uh, when I played for Slevan. My, I might have averaged maybe barely 20. Not a great season, you know, in, in the 74 season. 75 season, yes, I got a 50 in the big match. Uh, 58 and 76 season I got the 100 I was still baby of the team in my fourth as a fourth year colorsman now I have to I have to hear because you asked me whom I should thank I have to thank my father because when I turned 15 Abu Fuad called him and said 
your son needs to play club cricket in the third term. So we live down Castle Street. My father said, Puta, I happen to know the secretary of the club. You you can cycle there in five, five ten minutes. I'm taking you to the Oval. Made me a member. I reported for practice at 15 years of age. Mr. Devaraj was the captain of the Sara team. Skanda Kumar, my dear friend, Indrajit Kumara Swami, all of them were members of the team. I couldn't believe it when I got a break to play the first Sara match at 15 years of age. I had the only single name in the club. Wow. And at 15, I scored 100 in, in, in Sara. I don't know whether it's a record. But I can honestly say to this day, thanks to my father and the nurturing I received at Tamil Union, and that's why to this date I have never been a member of any other club. I owe a lot to this club. The very fact that the Oval was my home ground is why I literally broke every batting record, aggregate record, which has subsequently broke, been broken in both the Anand and the 50 over and the Anand and the big match. So in, before the 76 match, I was telling Jayasen, Jayasen, no, I... I Visualized. I, 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 the day before the big match, I just took my stance and just stared at the side screen from both ends. Um, one more, one more point. I have to thank. Obviously, I have to thank Lionel Mendis because there again, and and this is one message I want to give everyone. This is more than talent. It's a power of visualization, power of uh, positive thinking, uh, hard work. So in 1975. I was playing an under-16 match at Campbell Park against Naland, and I got a hundred. Lionel Mendes called me, "Puta, metana siya galariyan na." Right? I said, "Hey, sir, do you know when an Anandian scored a hundred in the big match last?" I said, "I don't know, sir. 1934. You scored a hundred in the big match. So he's the person who then gave me that impetus." And it was in my subconscious. So, so, so that's why I'm saying that if you set your mind to something, there are quite a few things that you can do in life. So those are the people I'd like to thank uh, very broadly. Wow, you know, it's very interesting, you know, that, you know, but you mentioned the fact that visualization, I've seen Matt, Matt Hayden doing it, you know, that's, that's, you know, very late. That I never realized that, you know, we never discussed about it at the time you were, you were playing. And... Uh, uh, perhaps you know that yeah, you know, only we, now were... we know the terminology only now we, we call it visualizing but at that time we didn't know better what it was so you what you're saying is i think i asked you this question at the beginning of our chat and that if you put your mind to it basically you can become what you want is that what you're trying to imply yes because you see this is something that cricketers today don't realize talent will take you in the modern game only so 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 much and I, you know, I can talk about the decline of Sri Lanka cricket, but any any field that you are in, any sport that you are in, whether it is even in the field of meditation, there are various planes and levels that you have to aspire to. And over time, if you look at in the case of cricket, the standards of fitness have improved. The standards of uh, sports management, technology underpinning the the game. And I realized the how important the field of sports management is when my younger son who refused to play cricket became uh, a good tennis player he became world junior 300 so we moved to florida where he was enrolled in a cricket academy the Bolotiri tennis academy at a young age of 10 or 11 years old right and the program he went through as 11 year old was so remarkable he had a mental coach he had a physical coach he had a technical coach uh, a, a dietitian, right? And 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 this is, mind you, at 10, 11 years of age, right? And then if you fast forward today, just go on YouTube and look at Virat Kohli's training regiment. So, so what, what, what I'm the, the point I'm trying to make is that that as economies and as sports and everything it evolves over time. I, I mean, if you look at the hundred meter record of 30 years ago to today, you know. It has been cut short by 20-30%. The same thing happens in sports. But unfortunately, if we take we as a country or we as players of cricket, we have stood still while the rest of the world has moved forward. I, I don't want to go any further, but that's the reason for the decline of Ananda cricket and cricket at large. Um, is, is the entire process of whether you run economies or run, the way you run companies or whether you run organizations or whether you manage sport has evolved 
and you believe that you know as a as a nation that you know we have not and we are lagging behind uh, comparatively in, in regardless sports you know that in when it comes to all all fields that you know we lack that you know that that's why we still struggle to come to terms with any other 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 developed nations when it when it comes to the economy or sports or whatever you know is that what you are trying to imply yes that's that's what i'm trying to imply and i've been <clears throat> saying for the last 7 years Uh, and that's one reason why i'm i'm one of 12 appellants seeking uh, the appeal, from the appeal court uh, for a new cricket constitution myself siddharth vittamuni murali dharan michael tisera skanda kumar all of us because we've seen the emergence of india as a power i mean where we were in from where we were in 96 to where we are today comparatively we've gone backwards and i maintain to this date unless there's a fundamental change in the structure of cricket we'll never again mark my words win an icc trophy i'm not talking of asia cup asia cup is just amongst a few nations icc trophy which is the world cup in cricket etc we'll never win it wow it's a huge statement because because yeah. the, because the rest of the world has moved forward and we have not we have let's, not. let's let's take the case of india india's supreme court 8 years ago directed the cricket administration to change the constitution that was a catalyst that was the example we used even in our plaint to the appeal court right now the minister is supposed to come with a new constitution i'm not too involved in in the matter i just lent my name went through the plaint sanjeev jawad the president's council is 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 taking the case forward right but let's take a simple thing like the ipl do you know who did the feasibility study for ipl very few people know this it was done by img the world's biggest sports management company based in the us and it was the img academy that my son learned to play tennis when he was 10 years old to 19 years old img was hired and told look here you have a sports management system in the us whether it's national football league national basketball b league baseball come and create an ipl for us and tell us what is best what is the best way to organize a, 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 a premier league uh, of t20 cricket they did the feasibility study and today img has a has a full fledged office and they manage the top cricketers roger federer is managed by img virat kohli i believe is managed by img i have to, have to go through the list sharapova was managed by img and and the managing of of of, of sports for person and i i must say even even sanga and uh, mahela were managed by charlie austin yeah he was a damn good manager because he was an entrepreneur yeah who is managing our, our, our people talent the fundamental point is this talent will only take you some part of the way the rest of it is your mind your diet your attitudes your education i mean not that i'm talking of university degrees right that's how much sports has evolved because of science and because of greater competition our country has more competition than what it did you know vietnam has exceeded i mean gone way ahead of us having been behind us india was behind us so was the rest of asia in 1958 or 55 or at the time of independence yep you're right and i saw in a recent report that in after covid if you comparatively that countries such as laos vietnam and i mean little countries you know you're far behind us you know even some of the african countries have uh, overtaken us and we are still as a country you know struggling to come to terms you know we still haven't and as an economist we, as we go on we'll talk about it you know I, i saw you in couple of your speeches that you know you're you know having solutions and you know how to move forward but before we go that you know there are so many people i don't know whether you managed to see the amount of the messages that are coming you know basically all those people who have known you over a period of time you know starting with mohammed fawmi and your namesake tilan vijay singh and anton gunatilaka you know is and you know, i was told i was having a chat with anton this evening you know when he heard that you are coming on the show we'll talk about it we'll move on to your music part you know that you have apparently appeared in one of his uh, uh, concerts and that uh, that you performed the song one of your originals you know if i'm not if, if anton correct me if i'm wrong if you are listening i think the song was called boston you know that that was the uh, the title of the song that which you performed and there are so many uh, christo jodash pradeep pereira ajit indrakumar gunasekar you know that who greatly promoted the show you know uh, aruna samarajeeva sara pallavela is your classmate you know and uh, there are so many and dilki hevagam of course janak's wife all joining all the way from canada it's it's 
so many people you know just all all so happy to see you after so many years and shane fernando what is shane saying great chat boys tell it you can join and open the batting with the land there <laughs> there you go all right all right shane you know let, let me know the when, when when is your next training day now that i know my my skipper my former skipper is there uh, i shall join you not a problem and oh prawn vijay singh uh, that your uh, former goodness gracious tilan vijay singh on the uh, categorically comprehensive with the finest all round product to emerge from the lankan school system such a varied range of talents yes Thank we you. spoke about it uh, uh, can you believe all these people you know that on on a chat show which whom you have not perhaps you have not spoken to you have not seen they all they are listening listening to you talking thanks of thanks for being here ronaya hatim oh good to have you on the show mate you know always you know it's a pleasure thank you for the kind compliment i don't know whether it's my best show but aruna de silva your teammate you know they says uh, tamil union teammate my god it's in a uh, susanta gunawardana and ruan fernando very impressive ruan de silva ruan de silva You know who Ruan De Silva is, yo. You know, don't tell me that he taught you how to play yeah. the, the piano. <laughs> yeah, in you know, a good to have you, Ruan, as well. And I don't know. I mean, I think you know we'll probably I will I will speak to all of you all. Or I will. I'm sure that you know we'll interact with you after the chat. Otherwise, uh, it will take a lot of time that you know we will not be able to talk about what I need to ask my old skipper. Skip. the messages are going on and on on and on you know it, it's it, it's like never ending you know that's uh, but it thank you to thank you very much uh, thanks for all the people who are still listening to us many people listening to us live and thank you very much and uh, always appreciate your support guidance and what not you, not every day that you get to see this great man and uh, you 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 said something about the constitution if you are called up if you are called up to serve At Sri Lanka cricket in any capacity are you happy to come forward and help Sri Lanka cricket Sharit I was called up to help Sri Lanka cricket in 1999 when I was chairman of the BOI uh, Mr Yenzi Vijay Tilaka who had just been appointed chairman of the interim committee invited me along with Skanda Kumar Kushil all of us were part of that committee and i i am giving you a wrong answer long answer because i wanted to serve sri lanka cricket and uh, particularly in considering we had won the world cup in 96 and uh, one of the first acts that we did uh was that rienzi got a board paper saying to allocate 30 million rupees in today's money few 100 million to build a stadium in damul so he said tilan look at this because the justification made by the then ceo was that we need a cricket ground in a place where it does not rain so i went back to the boi got some of my research department people to plot rainfall and i traveled to kurunagala and damulla to see whether at least this could come up in kurunagala and i'll just cut a long story short i went back to the next interim committee meeting and i said do not build a stadium in damulla it's going to be a white elephant and i gave the reasons why there are no clubs to rent the grounds the the, the the title matters are dodgy there are no proper schools who can afford to rent the grounds um, and rainfall alone is not a justification to send, spend hundreds of millions of rupees in building a ground then i said however i strongly recommend because asgiria in kandy was not a test standard venue that you build a stadium in pallakalle now how how did pallakalle come about I happened to listen to a speech given by the then minister Lakshman Kiriyal where he who's from Kandy where he complained about some of the challenges of playing test cricket in Pallakalle so I quickly went to the BOI zone in Pallakalle and asked the zone manager can we afford to carve out 6 or 7 acres that's required for a cricket ground he said yes I went to the president Chandrika and said madam I want you to give this as a free grant for cricket because I have done a study we can carry on with the zone without this particular extent of land and that's how i have not got publicity for this this is the first time i think i'm saying this in public ever uh, the pallakalle cricket stadium stadium cricket grounds only was donated as a free grant to sri lanka cricket by a decision taken by the board of directors of the boi with the support of the then president 
uh, in order to support cricket. And we stopped the construction of Dabulla. However, three months later, I get a call from the president, uh, Chandrika Satilan. The sports minister came to my room, banged his fist on the table. You can take a guess as to who the sports minister was at that time. And said, Tilan the Kri Diamati Mamada. And he had said apparently that he is not going to uh, participate in organizing elections or whatever. And the prisoner called me and said, Tilan, I have allowed him to dissolve the cricket board. So we were fired, the Rienzi Vijay Dilega committee. We had to face some problems as a consequence. Uh, Rienzi also petitions, false allegations. Because all because of we did an audit on 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 the on, on some of the management issues at cricket board, I can still remember some of the numbers in that audit. Uh, what happened after that? Pallakale was put in the back burner, and some other deal was going on. And Dambulna was built at a significantly higher cost than it should have cost. And to this date, it's a white elephant. That's the day I swore to myself, I will never ever join the cricket board again unless this constitution is changed. So yes, I would love to do something for cricket, but I want to see what the what the what the. This is not a personal attack against anyone. We even in our plane to the appeal court, we have not highlighted any individual issue. This is the only sport we are really of a world standard, and to take this sport and squander the talent that we have produced through poor management techniques and administration, having a strong balance sheet is just one issue. Yes, the cricket board at the moment has a strong balance sheet because. The world's royalties, the world is watching more cricket. It happens by chance because there are great, greater amounts of money being paid for television rights. But has so, a cricket evolved at, for, up, you know, to the same standard as the rest of the world? No. Afghanistan is beating us. Afghanistan should have won that match. They were a better side. So my, my point is that, that even for cricketers to excel, what made me a better manager, this is an important point, what made me, a, people ask me, Tilan, what made you a better manager or a better CEO? One answer, competition. I had to compete, I have competed for jobs with expats. I started earning a white man's salary in 19, sorry, 2002, competing against a fresh, Frenchman to become the joint CEO of Asian Hotels Properties. Even to this date in my business, I get, I, I get paid, you know, white, white man's consulting rates. That is because I, I, I sharpen my knowledge, my ability to compete by competing with the world, not amongst a small you know, community of incestuous friends or family or Ado Machang crowd. So, so, so we need to attract top management. Cricket has to be run like a top corporate anywhere in the world. And at the moment, it's not. So uh, my answer to the question is, sorry, I am not under this constitution. So you you are in you know, a part of that group that has formed you know change the constitution. Am I right? Yes, part of the twelve. Yeah. So what do you think will be the outcome? I mean, is there any 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 positive feedback or well, how far have you progressed on that? Oh, it's been dragging on for the last three years, like everything else. One minister so, was was you know dodging it, you know saying we want further dates. Um, and I'm told the current minister, I mean, Siddharth and everyone are more involved in this than I am. I mean, I have a business to run and Siddharth is semi-retired. He's, you know, like Sunil uh, spending his time uh, meditating and what have you. I mean, so, you know, I, I do a little bit of it, but nevertheless, uh, I've left it <laughs> in the good, hand, good hands of the likes of Siddharth, Dinar Phillips uh, I've, uh, to take matters forward. But it all depends on the leadership, the sports minister and the sports secretary to recognize that cricket, like a nation's economy, like its people, have to be nourished and cherished, and and it belongs to the entire nation. Absolutely, it doesn't right. belong I, to I, any I, private entity. You know, it's not a private entity. No, it's not. I, you know, Sri Lanka cricket for a sort of organization of that size has the least amount of checks and balances. Uh, I, I mean, compared to companies incorporated under the Companies Act. I've advocated that Sri Lanka cricket should be a company limited by guarantee with all of the checks and balances under the Companies Act. Proper, Absolutely. you know, so, so there, there's, you know, please, uh, you know, I, I'm happy to send you the copy of the plaint. Let everyone read it. Uh, I didn't draft it. I, I just lent my name because I feel passionate about this game. 
Thank you very much. You know that one point you said, you know, which I didn't know that, you know, you said this the first time you are you are you are, you are saying that in public that your involvement, uh, having SLC acquiring public LA grounds, you know, I, I didn't know that you were actually because all I knew was it was uh, belonged to Murali, Murali, and that you know we acquired the grounds from Murali. I didn't know the initial part of it, and you know, so it all happened the time you were chairman BOI, right? Am I right? Yes. Yes. And also, so like, we, I built the yeah. Katunayaka, I mean, BOI built the Katunayaka cricket grounds as well. So, yes, that's and, right. And that, yes. and that was built, by the way, to create greater camaraderie between the estate workers and the management. Oh, sorry, the, the zone workers and the zone and management workers. so that so that there's less industrial, there's more industrial harmony, you know. So, so those were the few things that I did for cricket. So, so you were BOI chairman and you were serving in the interim committee, active member of the interim committee. Only and you were five months, five months or six months. Yes. And then you were taken out of SLC and then you were set back at BOI. Isn't that, isn't that right? You yes. know, that, you know, it's it more, most, you know, like uh, very similar to what transpired at Sri Lanka cricket. I think that was set back for you having done all that work, you know, the, the getting investors and working on, you know, various other, other aspects and, See, Charit, just... I, have, I have realized that this country has a virtuous cycle and a non-virtuous cycle. The virtuous cycle is that we all should be happy that we are born in a beautiful country. We have our respective religions that we follow. But the unvirtuous cycle is that we are a nation dri driven by cycles of Tanhava and Irishiyava. Right? So, when I ran the BOI, there were certain guns pointed at me. Certain people thought that I was going to be a minister. And uh, I, I mean, I can mention names um, because I have not done this in uh, public forums other than uh, uh, in, in uh, you know, private conversations. Um, one day I get a call from the president saying, um, Dr. P.B. Jayasundara has made an allegation of bribery against me. And then she produced a piece of handwritten note and said, is this your bank account? I said, yes, HSBC. I said, madam, there must be two, three thousand dollars in that. I've always had that account. I mean, it has not had a deposit for the last two or three years. But, and is this your handwriting? I said, absolutely not. Right. Um, so then she said they want to investigate because the allegation, there's an allegation uh, that uh, you have solicited a bribe into this account. Um, and the shocking thing was that the complaint to the bribery commission, and this is something I'm saying for the first time, uh, the complaint to the bribery commission was made by my own board member pertaining to a board decision that was taken where he was present. He was my ministry secretary. Dr. P.B. Jayasundara complained to the bribery commission directly without the minister's knowledge or calling for an inquiry and without my knowledge on behalf of a man who we proved in court had a criminal track record. Okay. So when CBK told me, Tilan, what should I tell the chairman of the bribery commission? They're asking whether you should be investigated. I said, madam, please tell them to proceed. So I was called to the uh, bribery commission, give your, give your handwriting samples, which I did. Then they came the next day to my office and said they want handwriting samples that were written in the in the in the course of um, course of writing, you know, so that so that I could not have forged my writing. Okay. So here's where bribery works. In one and a half days, when in fact normally an examiner of question documents takes two months, two and a half months to give a report. So this was sent to the government analyst department by the bribery commission and asked to evaluate whether this is in fact Ilan Vijay Singh's handwriting or not. In one and a half days, the examiner of question documents sends a letter to the Bribery Commission. This is absolutely Tilan Vijay Singh's handwriting. And here, to cut a long story short, wow. I got absolutely disillusioned. I said, I'm going to clear my name through court, which I did. They did a complete asset investigation on me, right? And they were all surprised that one year before I joined the BOI, the year before I joined BOI, I had paid 3.2 million rupees in taxes in today's money would be you know, maybe 50 million, 60 million, because I, I own shares in Asia Capital. I had sold my shares. I was investing in treasury bills and completely exonerated from the asset investigation. We flew down an examiner of question documents from India. 
got an opinion from the examiner question documents of Scotland Yard, disproved that it was my handwriting, and handsomely won the case. Right? I I moved on in, in life. I mean, it was actually meditation that helped me uh, overcome the bitterness. Right? Uh, for several and thanks to my wife, and I have no bitterness today. But I have learned the nature of men or women or what have you of how vindictive, how dangerous people can be to essentially bring down somebody who, you know, via these sorts of uh, false allegations. And, I, and I'm the first to say that today the bribery law is used to fix people rather than prosecute those who deserve to be prosecuted. So that's that's the cloud under which I resigned. But happily, I mean, three weeks after I resigned, I get multiple job offers. Everybody knew this was a hoax, that I wouldn't be stupid to write my own bank statement. And it was it was HSBC account. Uh, I mean, yes, it was a, uh, uh, something that, you know, and the question was, how could this person have got the account? My, those days, we didn't have electronics. The bank, my bank statements files were in my office. I, I mean... I mean, if someone's listening to this as a public servant, please keep your bank statements secret because somebody can put some money into your account and, and claim that it was a bribe. So, um, so, so I, I want to tell you one story as well. I actually thank my father. I said, Tati, if not for you, the value system you, were, you had inculcated in me, the way they went after me, raiding, my wife had a shop, customs raided it. I was, I was investigated by Indian Revenue, right? I, I told my father I would probably be potentially facing jail had I because because there were temptations because of the way they went after me including uh, the, the the dr jasundar and uh, the the then director of the bribery commission rien jasukuratna both acting in concert i'm saying this because i have the documentation the entire file i can say this today openly after 20 some years entire file of the bribery commission was shown to me by none other than President Chantrika Kumarathunga said, Tilan, have a look at this file. And that is when I realized how people abuse their power to bring down people. Right? So, sorry if I'm getting carried away, but but that's uh, that's been life. I mean, and I'm not bitter about it. Yes, I have, you know, spent millions on, uh, on, on, on lawyers. I guess I had lawyers also cheated me. And I've realized that the law profession also has a lot to lot to learn. But thankfully, a lawyer by the name of Mahinda Jawadana uh, took it upon himself as a matter of passion. And and I must say, the judgment I got, which clearly said that witness number one, witness number two of the prosecution, abhagya sakya, which means a complete lie. So that's 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 uh, sorry if I'm taking too long, but that's my story. But these are life lessons, Charit, because. We have a, say, a way in this country to target people who necessarily might have, might, might want to do the right thing. Because for years we've got away with benefiting from nepotism, connections, um, illicit money, not necessarily hard work, building businesses, you know, creating jobs. Um, you know, and that's that's one of the the breakdown of the value system is uh, is why we are where we are today, and that's the reason I'm I'm you know just boxing on uh, uh, in 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 life, not uh, doing too many things uh, to 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 cause consternation amongst people. Well, I'm glad that you know that you, know, you had the opportunity to you know, get something you know that's in a stuck inside your system for a long time and you know to out in the open and you know people had always you know have their reservations you know like but i knew what what transpired but you know it's just you know case of you know what i knew and you know what you knew and you know i'm glad that you came out and said what you need to say it openly i never thought that you know you would that uh adventurously that you know mention names you know that's you know you know there's nothing to hide you know basically yeah, yeah, I, mean, I, have, got, you know, I have i have the documents to prove very well said. I appreciate that. Um, skip, you know, that, you know, that it's relating to that, you know, about the BOI. And there was a question that what SL lacks the most is commercialization of many scientific innovation for different industries due to the gap between the public and PVD sectors. Tilan very high, uh, rightly had an ambitious plan one time for a public-private partnership, which is a PPP. 
a program which is the only way forward to this country. Why is question? My question is, why is it a failure? Um, so I had a role to play in 96 when I set up uh, the PPP unit, which was then called the Bureau of Infrastructure Investment at the BOI. And I got special cabinet approval uh, to bring people from the private sector to work with public sector officials. And of course, we got a lot of technical assistance to learn about what PPPs were. So 96 to 2001, we did South Asia's first ever port sector PPP, South Asia Gateway Terminals, John Keel's PO. First ever renewable energy plant, Sumanasekara's first ever thermal energy plant. Uh, we did telecommunications, uh, Lanka Bell, Santel, all of that came during my time. And then we did uh, Nimasipura, Ekala, Millennium City, Atharugiriya was a PP, on a PPP structure. Four hospitals were built, Apollo Hospital, which is Lanka Hospitals, Durdens, all of them were on a particular PPP structure that was uh, that was built. So, uh, 2001, when I resigned from the BOI, the BOI had fantastic capability of having financially closed. That means it got implemented $800 million worth of public-private partnership projects. So, from zero to in Mini, Mini Hydro, by the time I left five years later, we had 70 megawatts of Mini Hydro. Today, over 300. Uh, private power plants went from zero to about 300 to 400 megawatts, right? And um, what happened after I left, my successor brought in the 26-year-old son of one of his best friends uh, who didn't know a hang about uh, what a PPP was and all of the capable staff left uh, the BOI and, and uh, the, the BOI just became lost um, over the years. Um, and then, you know, again, back in 2017, Mangala Samaravira invited me to... Uh, uh, set up a PPP unit in the finance ministry. I did the work on an honorary basis, set it up. We had a two, three billion dollar transaction pipeline, uh, 27, 28 million dollars of grant and soft technical assistance money from the donors uh, to hire any international local expert for a particular PPP, whether it's LNG or whatever it was. Um, I Two months after President Gotabe's election, I chose to resign because I found that uh, the Secretary of the Treasury was given certain instructions by, again, Dr. P.B. Jayasundar uh, to say that, uh, you know, this should be dismantled. And um, so I thought, okay, uh, once bitten, twice shy, or maybe twice bitten, what have you, I quietly resigned. And uh, in March 2020, uh, the PPP unit was wound up. Um, and and today, uh, the reason why PPPs are not happening is that uh, we have failed to attract and retain competent talent. And I, 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 I must say one thing, that the public sector has fantastic talent. It's been a pleasure, privilege, working with 95% of honest, educated, dedicated public servants. All what they need is leadership and exposure, and, and hopefully one day better salaries and remuneration, right? I mean, it pained me to have two sets levels of salary, private sector salaries, so many times more than the public sector salaries, but I want to tell you an interesting, interesting episode. So in some way, 96, um, I was, the BUI literally wanted to, management wanted to go on strike. Sir, at a management meeting, you are bringing 27, 28 year olds at, 80,000 rupees a month. I mean, I'm talking 96 money when I'm making only 40,000. I'm, you know, I'm a senior person in public service. Um, how can you do this? So I said, fine. Any one of you raise your hand if you're willing to resign your job, work on a contract where I have the right to termi terminate your services with one month's notice. Because that's the basis on which these people left their private sector jobs and came. They came on contract. Sure. I can, I can, or the board can terminate their services if they're incompetent. I said, okay, raise your hands. Tomorrow I'll give you the job. How many people raise their hands? Zero. Okay, so, so the only way, as I go back to this, only way to create a performance culture is competition. Salary becomes irrelevant. I mean, in fact, in fact, I was, as you probably know, when I was offered a hundred thousand rupees salary, I mean, this is another story that nobody knows. I, this is really a humbling story. One day I get a call from the then secretary to the treasury, Mr. A.S. Jayawardena, 
who had i think heard some of my speeches and he knew about me and said i want to come and see you now can you imagine 35 years old secretary of the treasury calling me to come and come and see me at my house i said sir please come he came to my house and he said pilan i have recommended your name along with a few others to become the chairman of the boi you will get a call from the president and please go for the interview two weeks later i get a call i had a one on one interview with the president and he said she said would you like to be the director and i didn't know i was going to be chairman as well at that time both were the same would you like to take up this position i said madam i have to think about it then she immediately said i'll match your salary in the private sector right so i said madam how much are you earning i said you know company pays my house i didn't i had not bought a house at that time um i i think i would have mentioned about 140 150000 rupees in 95 then i saw her face fell then you know this is important no i was asked the most intelligent question i have ever been asked in an interview she asked me tilan how much do you need to live so i did a calculation i said madam the company is paying my rent it's 40000 rupees my son is only 1 year old i can live on 60000 rupees that's how the 100000 came about no sooner my appointment happened there was a parliamentary debate where did this guy come from at a salary of two or three times that the president earned i was paid to leave the private sector i left all my directorship so six months later i sold my shares in asia capital and that's when i bought the house that i live in today right and you can imagine the pressure but it is that pressure that sense of competition that made me perform and that's something people don't understand it was not a privilege given to me it was a privilege for me to focus on my job so that i don't have to worry about where the you know daily bread is going to come from and to educate my children that is a sort of culture we have to bring a performance based culture is based on having both both the sense of fear and a sense of competition that there's someone else there to take your position and that's not there in cricket today because of the domestic tournament structure that is what takes people to the brilliant heights look at how much competition has come about because of ipl and competition is the life blood of an economy that's why that's why i am in, in, involved in assisting minister kanchana in unbundling and and breaking up the ceb that's why i got involved with mangala samaravira i i helped him in in breaking up i mean first we brought competition to sri lanka telecom to break the monopoly there was a two and a half year period for a telephone line the younger people won't remember this so in came lanka bell and sun tell i signed the boi agreement and then we privatized sri lanka telecom okay still 51% is the government but we privatized the management so why did the port improve charit we would never have become a hub port if not for sagt we even negotiated hard with john keels and the moment sagt became operational guess what the improvement in ship waiting time ship waiting time reduced by 85% sure. that is the power of competition and all of us are talking of protectionism and import barriers and you know up you so i am poshita i mean come on a small island can't be so i am poshita we have to be more outward outward oriented that was a crux of my my speech at uh, the all corporation to change the mindset of a nation i mean i can't do that alone how would you how would you go about i was just was going to ask you about that question and i can see that you delivered so many public speeches you know that do we i mean there's any light at the end of the tunnel you know can we turn around this economic downfall you know that you know, i can hear what you're saying can we create create a climate where you know we can be competitive compete with other nations can that be done the good news is charit sri lanka can turn on a dime i've always said five good bureaucrats and five good ministers can run this country sri lanka is right like running a medium sized company somewhere in india or israel or wherever sure it's it's easier to govern this country than running a big city in india right but the core core team that's running a country must not have diverse diver diverge uh, diverse ideology they have, they must all be focused on a single strategy but in a situation where literally every every government has multiple political parties with different ideologies and different so called economic models no you can't 
that's one reason why I, in my speech, tried to coalesce everyone towards this very simple economic ideology, and that is the principle of economic freedom. And I use the example of cricket. I again go back to cricket. Why I, I've been asking this, I'm going to at the risk of repeating, I've been saying this in my speeches. Why do you think we won the 96 World Cup? The very simple answer is that Gamini Disanayaka came and democratized cricket, where regardless of your race, caste, school, religious background, you had a fair and equal opportunity of being recognized and selected to play for the national side. So similarly, in an economy, which is underpinned by the principles of economic freedom means that very simply you make the state and the government irrelevant, but you give the tools to every citizen of this country to have in order to succeed in a given economic system. Now, you can criticize the American uh, uh, political system. You can criticize the Italian political system where every six months a government changes. But the underlying level of economic freedom that you have is so much that entrepreneurship thrives and the economy just hums along regardless of politics, right? So, so, but in this country, politics, business, and everything is so inter intertwined, and and it is it it, it basically has a, has the effect of corrupting an entire society, right? Unless and until we unleash the latent talent of an individual and not make them a servant of a politician, dependent on a handout, dependent on 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 whom you know, what you know. That's why education is important. That is why digitization is important. That is why having proper infrastructure for private industry to thrive is important. That is why ease of doing business is important. But we are stuck in an ideology that is as confused as any I have ever seen. I mean, you know, certainly, I mean, the, now is the better time to transform than anywhere else. So, so the cause for our economic crisis is, I, as I said in my speech, is um, incompetence and rank fiscal management. I mean, I mean, COVID was not the reason. The, the data proves it, right? But at least now we have a more open, you know, in, in, and I'm not making a political speech here, but we need to be, we need to enter into certain free types of free trade agreements. We need to encourage both local and foreign investment. We had to focus on SMEs. We had to focus on agribusiness. Um, but the bureaucratic hurdles are many. I mean, if I can tell you the hurdles we've got to, we had to jump in just to overcome the, uh, the the issues connected to the reform in the electricity sector. Oh, there were many a bureaucrats uh, who were pulling us uh, pulling us backwards. Yep. You're right. I mean, you, told, you spoke about 1996, you know, the team. Hashan, good to have you on the show, mate. You know, as he says, I asked you that question, you know, that you know, can that be done? But, you know, you're very positive it can be done with the correct leadership and with the correct mindset. You know, that you know, you, what you say is right. There's no place for straightforward men in this country, which is hopefully we can change it. Lalit Gunavatna, our former captain, and the, you know, he's watching. You know, he's watching to every word that you say. And there are many, many more skip you know that everybody is you know hooked on listening to what you say Mohammed Fahmi uh one of your former teammates you know sending his regards going back to he claims that you know he was the under 13 captain in 1997 I don't know whether you saw that question Pradeep he's been what writing and he's, what is he's the asking, question? uh I can't see the let me see whether I can go and okay I got it I'm the under 13 vice captain in 1997 Versailles just one question I'm a tourist guide Lecturer now and happened to meet a couple in New Switzerland uh, who work for Price Water Coopers. They predicted uh, where am I? They predicted the economic downfall well ahead around 2012-13. And I asked them how do you get that info? They said that company Richard has given the info not to invest here, as all of their findings were that were heading into worse situation. My question is to you. Don't we have the human resources to predict well ahead and find the solution of all of them are biased and thinking only about their families? I think you touched upon it. You know, that's the, it's exactly what you said. You know, if you can answer Pradeep, you'll be very happy. You know what he said. No. Of course, we have the human resources. I was, as I was saying, the central bank has some of the finest minds this country can, this country can be proud of. The treasury has some of the finest minds. It is just that those who lead them, their, their, their voices, when the economic, 
when 2020, 2021 came before the bankruptcy, I've said this before, I had numerous calls from colleagues that I'd worked with at the central bank and, and, and finance ministry saying our voice has been suppressed by a bureaucratic dictatorship. If you open your voice, you are victimized. I, I was victimized because I had access to the powers that be. I had, I had, I had access to the president because, because I, the, certain people listened to me. So as long as that culture of victimization remains, and, and the voice of a bureaucrat is not heard and listened to, uh, you have a politicized bureaucracy. Right? So today, the prestige of being a public servant like my father was, I mean, he was a proud public servant. And it was, you know, that prestige has been diminished because of the politicization of the bureaucracy. Today, the minister changes, the secretary changes. Right? There must be a proper, proper performance appraisal system. Again, I come back to competition. I come back to the... I, I mean, there's... To me, I would love to see a secretary getting paid a million rupees so that whether it's from the private sector, public sector, even even from India, let's bring people. I mean, the governor of... The, the Reserve Bank of India was a foreign national once upon even though he has Indian heritage, but he did not hold an Indian passport. But he was, he was recruited based on his competence. So, so, so that is... You know, I have a lot of faith in our people. We are just being led down the garden path by those who are, you know, power hungry, wants to curry favor with a particular political setup. Right? I mean, I'm not saying everything has to be a meritocracy, but there must be some fundamental shift towards bringing people where, with diverse skills, with diverse backgrounds. I'm a firm believer in diversity. Diversity. That's what happened in 96. We had the most diverse cricket team. You can imagine from the outstations, from different ethnicities, you know, from various parts of the world, and they all deserved a place in the team and brilliant tactics, brilliant leadership, brilliant coaching. But what did we do? We squandered it. Right. And somebody has, you know, that I don't know whether you have heard this term, uh, Skip. So, you know, someone has sent me a message what the system we have in place right now is called. Catistocracy. Have you heard that term? Yes, there was something on social media about it. <laughs> well, I think it's in a very appropriate, you know, for the, what, what's going on at the moment, you know, that what you said, government by the, the least suitable or competent citizens of a state, you know, it's called this catistocracy, you know, that, that's the term that, you know, that I too, I have never heard, I learned and it, I found it very amusing. That's now relating to that what uh, Pradeep said. How do you foresee the future? You think can we come out of it? You know, with you know, yes. are there any any uh, systems in place, structures in place for us to you know get over this uh, situation? I believe we can come out of this. Um, we have to. I mean, there's going to be a lot more, lot of pain uh, in, in 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 the process of uh, coming out. We still are not paying our debts. Uh, I mean, next from next year, we will certainly have to whatever the haircuts that the international debt negotiations go through, we will have to continue continue that. But really, what we really need to do is reposition the country because we no longer can rely on cheap labor. Repositioning means what are the inherent advantages and where should we be uh, focusing private and public investment. And my view is that we have to be ex export-oriented. And let us look at, just let's take the mineral sector. Right. I've been talking for 25 years now. We have enough phosphate deposits to be self-sufficient in fertilizer and if necessary, even export fertilizer for the next 200 years. But the a power of phosphate media is and you have a state-owned company, Lanka Phosphate, doing nothing with it. We have amongst the world's best graphite. Have we added value to that? No. We have the world's best, among the world's best, titanium. Have we added value to that? No. Uh, we, we do have natural gas. There are some progress is being made there. Then let's take the other natural resources we have. Recently, because I'm involved in power sector reform, two studies were released. One is uh, Sri Lanka's potential for offshore wind. 50 gigawatts, 50,000 megawatts of offshore wind, clean energy. We can become an export juggernaut in, in renewable energy and green hydrogen. I have not yet read the green hy hydrogen report as yet. It, it was released only two, 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 two weeks ago. Within two years, we can be exploited in this if we take focused action. action. 
we have a vast ocean do we have uh, have we taken advantage of that uh, tourism in my view we are only scratching the surface um, and then of course industry we need to migrate we, we need to look at beyond uh, beyond the parallel and let's take our location advantage for 40 years we've been giving lip service to our location advantage if you look at the rankings in terms of sri lanka as far as the location for a port we are top 10 but our logistics performance indexes were 80 or 90 because of the yep. inefficiency of customs inefficiency of certain other procedures poor digitization so have we made advantage of our location no singapore has so turning this country around is a simple task. As I mentioned earlier, five good ministers and five good bureaucrats is enough. Going back to you know that you know that our constitution, it's a, in a question that is coming up. Some people have uh, written to me. I'm not what, an expert. On that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what have, what transpired in Singapore? For the first time, a non-Chinese, a citizen, became the prime minister of Singapore. Now you were, didn't you know that? You know, it's from a, yeah, I knew that. A, I knew that. Yeah. I knew that. Yeah. And and a, and a Muslim became the mayor of uh, London. And an Indian is, you know, like in you know, a running, running, you know, the uh, Microsoft, prime minister of, Microsoft and Google. Yeah. And also the, you know, the British prime minister. You know, though he's he, he's you know he's from Indian origin. My Correct. question to you: Can th this country be run by a non singalese uh, Will we ever see a day like that? Can the constitution be changed? You know, is that a possibility? No, no. no according to the constitution, a non singalese can certainly be head of state. Or I, I believe if Lakshman Kadirgama had not been killed, he would have been the prime minister of this country, the first non singalese prime minister. So, so there is nothing, nothing to stop other than the fact that I think you have to be according to the constitution, you have to be born in the country, right? But that just should not stop us from attracting talent. Let me just throw some statistics, right? Yeah. The work, of the working population in Singapore and Hong Kong, 45% of them were not born there. Every yeah. four out of 10 Silicon Valley companies was, are started by immigrants. And that is because those countries have become magnets to attract talent. Now, I'm not saying to bring farmers and laborers so that you, you impinge on the on the jobs of the, the, the some of the, you know, uh, jobs that uh, you know are, are ideally performed by Sri Lankans, but if we become a magnet for attracting talent, they bring with them capital, know-how, knowledge, and a sense of competition for competition for all of us. So we up the game, right? That is what happened with IPL in India, with the foreigners and the Indians playing together. The the, the bar was raised. Coach coaches were from all all parts of the world. There was competition for coaches, competition for pit players. Right, and for every player, there are five people who are knocking on the door to get to get your place. Here, here's sorry, I, I something came to my mind. So, yeah, just if you want to really prove that where our cricket is, just take the five top bowlers and the five top batsmen in our current cricket team, their averages, and compare them to the five top of the five uh, five top players and bowlers and batsmen of the five top test playing teams. If Virat Kohli is at 50 odd just check what our captain's average is so anyway so so ultimately it's 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 all there in the numbers uh that we as a country our economy hit rock bottom in 2021 uh our cricket has hit, hit rock bottom just look at the stats look at the win loss ratios don't worry about whether we want an occasional asia cup or occasional three match test test series overall win, win loss record and overall averages and we deserve to be number eight in the international rankings. Right? So, so as I was saying, it's, uh, we've got to be open to attract talent, bring, bring back the diaspora. Um, I, I mean, I remember that there was a move. I mean, I, let, me, let me put it this way. When Apollo Hospital was built, I was told by the investors, there's a shortage of nurses, shortage of doctors. I gave unlimited visas. Did the SLMC go on strike? No, because I was able to argue with them. Here, here are the shortages. And people came. Now, I'm one of the co-founders of SLIIT, SLIT, Sri Lanka Institute of Information Technology. We were blocked when we wanted to get into medical education. We wanted to buy Saiten. We were blocked. Why, why are we being blocked from getting into medical education? Fear of the, Sri Lanka has one of yeah. the worst ratios of doctors to uh, per, per citizen. 
we need at least we should double. I mean, of course, now doctors are all going overseas. So, so unless and until we get over this class-driven fear of competition, we want to be protected. I mean, that's why I'm saying we have to give the tools to everyone to succeed in this economic system. That's why more money has to be spent on education. Um, and and, and I, I can tell you, no country in the world has eradicated corruption. But one of the ways of reducing corruption is through digitization of procurement and strengthening the appeal process and the procurement processes, etc. But there, there is resistance, right? I mean, let's not talk about, you know, bringing, I mean, yes, there's a new bribery act that has come there, but but it is it is in the enforcement of these these, these laws that we, 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 we fail. Because people are fundamentally flawed in this country and the system takes advantage of uh, of uh, certain loopholes and weaknesses. Sorry, I'm well rambling on. Yeah, no, no. The, when I, I mean, when you spoke about digitize digitization, I can say. Speaking of digitization, Boa. Yeah, Boa is my co-host in, in many shows. He's saying that uh, make the payment infrastructure crypto friendly. What 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 are your thoughts on you know cryptocurrency going going digital? You know. <laughs> Digitalization. I would, like be, I would like to be guided by the central bank on that because I don't want to comment on it because I'm old school. Uh, I, I, you know, one has to look at whether has any other country done it. If some other country done it and it has worked, okay, let's try it. If they haven't, let's not experiment. This is this is not the time to experiment. You're right. I hope, boy. I hope you got the answer. You know that you're listening. You know that uh, <laughs> I was about to ask you the the language that you speak. Is anyone in this country, do they listen to you? I mean, you know, but, well, everything that you have said, you know, the people are listening to you and it makes perfect sense in what you say, you know, that, you know, you have, you have laid out the, the pathway out of this you know, economic downturn. Is anyone taking any notice of what you say? Um, I did, I, I don't know, my speech went viral. I'm, I'm, planning to publish it you know all my thoughts those were thoughts i put together during covid right where i i had plenty of time at hand i thought long and hard on getting a message across not just to anandians but to the then president then finance minister the political leadership what is it that i can impart in terms of what i've learned running you know being ceo of you know diverse companies from financial services to commodities, agriculture to real estate, and then being holding two, two positions in public service over, over, over a period of 30 years. And that is the crux of my thinking, right? Others could have diverse opinion. They might, they might disagree with the economic council structure that I proposed where, where we categorize every possible ministry subject into eight areas and those are head, those are headed by cluster chairmen. I mean, that's how we run companies. Uh, when I used to run run bigger companies than this, we we had proper organization structures, uh, leadership structures, in order to make sure that ideas get filtered at, at, right to the top, and then the board of directors. Um, so, what more can I do, Charit? I mean, I, as you know, I mean, last so many years, I've shunned from publicity. This is. You know, because you were pestering me for so long that I agreed to do this. <laughs> and, and Thank I'm you very glad, much. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that I did. And uh, um, I mean, I, I, I'm planning to publish my writings, not because I want to be famous, but I want to give it to a bunch of students because one day somebody needs, you know, somebody needs to understand why our economy crashed. It was entirely self-inflicted. Entirely. And, and, and what I was trying to prove through the multitude of charts I gave former President Gotabe Rajapaksa was that the statistics were downward trending for 12 years to 15 years. And the economy was under the management of the same team. So, so for example, I mean, I'll just give you one statistic. The year prior to the, prior to the crash, our debt service ratio was 134%, the highest ever. That means we needed 134 rupees to service debt of 100 rupees. I know if anybody need, did not know that was the time to go for an organized debt restructuring, I don't know what they were thinking. Right? That we were going to get money from the Middle East? No. Or we were going to get money from China, free money? 
because those countries also saw the mismanagement right so 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 it's a, it's a, it's it's a uh, sorry the, the the point i'm trying to make is that uh, i i don't want to be giving press interviews or getting up on political uh, you know stages and things of that so though i have been many a times asked to enter into politics but you know at some point i mean if i am asked to do something like how minister kanchan asked me to suffer some help about a year ago i've done that voluntarily um happy to help in uh, the reform process uh, i still still spend time uh, on matters connected to slit which was a passion project when i was chairman bui it was i mean again we've also been maligned by the media and certain ministers i mean i must say this for the for the record sliit was started with a 30 20 some 20 to 30 million rupee grant given by the boi it's a company that is not for profit company limited by guarantee mahapola supported it two years later after it, it started the entirety of the money given by mahapola has been paid back and the vision for sliit was that it should be run as like harvard yale or what have you as a not for profit outside the state education system and today we have 18000 students and about 50% of the the stem degrees science technology engineering and management uh, uh, mathematics degrees in this country so we 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 basically bridged the gap and we created competition to the state education system still morotu is the best for morotu graduates i am not taking that away parents they would be good for other things but we filled a void because we were not creating enough IT graduates and look what happened to IT that software exports grew at double digit levels for almost 20 years and the other thing we did was we gave tax breaks for any other private institution starting software trading in 1995 october president chandrika signed off on the regulations that's how api it came that's how informatics came so we didn't want sli to be a monopoly we opened up the entire sector for the private sector to get into higher education and that's why we that particular sector grew but i want to ask the question what have we done in the in, in the agriculture sector we have not reformed we have a 2000 i must say this my father who who built roads one day he's a, he was more a student of history and for those who are getting into old age i must say at 84 years of age he enrolled in a masters program in 80, uh, at at university of kalania in history and he told me if there's one field that sri lankans are absolutely world class in for over 2000 years and that's irrigation engineering but in a country with such a rich heritage in industrial uh, irrigation engineering why do we have one of the most unproductive agriculture sectors in 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 this part of the world poor policy making not the fault of the farmer you mentioned the fact that we have enough resources to be you know self sufficient in fertilizer we all know what happened to fertilizer which destroyed our agriculture in a few years back not only self sufficient we can export fertilizer <laughs> if you, if you. but you know what what again again this is what i call astana gata desha premitve misplaced patriotism that is what you know this is whole game is about right there are these you know claims of patriots ape de meka vikunanna bah meka ape de right but let us really look at it this way certain individuals who had some vested interest went to the supreme court and said that if a power of phosphate is exploited jayaganga which is part of our cultural heritage is going to suffer that was a false uh, that 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 was a supreme court decision based on a false premise but has any government had the guts to go back and go before a full bench and get this overturned with a very simple argument there is no impact anyway any exploitation of our minerals is subject to environment impact assessment right now if if someone is not enforcing these eia rules and regulations yes then then that somebody can go and take public interest litigation then saying look here this is damaging the environment but why are we just looking at it make ape sampatha and importing mm -hmm. i don't know i can't remember at that time 30 million metric tons or some something of that sort of uh, of fertilizer of course because of the impurities in this phosphate we need a couple of hundred million dollars worth of investment right so obviously it has to it may necessarily have to come from foreign sources or joint venture etc but let us try it is my point
Well said, sir. You know, just moving on. What's that singular word you said? I know that misplaced patriotism. You know that you know as Astana gata what you know Astana gata desha premitre. Wow, you know I learned something. Astana gata desha premat. Premathia. Oh, wow. That, you know, you learn something every day. Skip. Quickly moving on to TW Corp. You know, that's a, I was told that it's a unique uh, invest, uh, private you know, investment banking system that which you have created. Can you tell people more about, you know, the, what's so unique about the TW Corp? Okay, I have not got any publicity with this company since I started it 12 years ago because uh, I quit the corporate world, a very lucrative position as group managing director of the owning company of World Trade Center and Havelock City to spend more time with my kids who are studying overseas. And I started this company uh, to provide investment banking advice. Investment banking is, you know, mergers and acquisitions, capital raising. Yep. Uh, and also to advise companies with real estate assets on how to unlock their value in real estate. So it was run, you know, primarily as my own consulting company where I used to do a few mergers and acquisitions transactions but then when covid came and my earnings went down dramatically i thought to myself that and particularly when the ppp agency was shut down and i was very very upset at that because i wanted you know susanta ratnagar was chairman boi to absorb that staff but all, when the staff received termination notices i said whoever wants to join my firm please join and i took a calculated risk Right and 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 uh, TW Corp, which is called TWC, went from being more investment banking oriented to more advisory oriented, specializing on public-private partnerships. So we started winning donor contracts to advise the government of Maldives, advise the government of Bangladesh. Uh, so we advise foreign governments on how how PPP should be done. Unfortunately, those staff were trained by the World Bank and were supposed to give advice to the government. But then I thought to myself, if governments cannot build institutional memory by retaining their talent, I might as well build institutional memory and a management team that would be relevant for a country in distress, a private sector that would need assistance in a, in a, in a situation of that sort, and a people. So today, I have become more development oriented. So when I provide... Uh, various advice. I, I bring in my experience, and I have a younger team. Uh, and today we um, we we are working in areas of climate adaptation. Uh, these are funded by international donors, um, both in Sri Lanka and Maldives. Uh, we advise companies on uh, uh, capital raising strategies, um, and uh, we provide quite a bit of uh, advice to local and. Uh, uh, of course, in Sri Lanka, I, I try my, you know, I don't, I don't like to charge the Sri Lankan government, but if I do advise the Sri Lankan government, it is usually paid for by a donor, uh, and of course, uh, foreign governments. So that's what what I do, and I personally now believe that any system change or any change, I cannot and I will not do it as public as a public servant anymore because I've done it twice. Every time I've put in so much effort, actually peak of my life, you know, in my in my late 30s, uh, I, I, I was doing national service. But what I now want to do is make a difference as a private citizen. Uh, we are looking at raising funds to be channeled into the underdeveloped areas of Sri Lanka, but entirely through private philanthropic money, Sri Lanka diaspora, etc. And, and we want to build some platforms. So, so, so essentially, what we try and do is also what we call building value chain. So let's take agribusiness. We have agri exporters. How do we scale them up? Of course, they need capital, but they also need smallholder farmers. How do we build a, a, a greater and better smallholder network? Of course, for that, you need some sort of donor money or philanthropic money. So we are, we are in the business of connecting the dots and seeing how we can build a better Sri Lanka. But unlike in the cases, case of the past, as a public servant, this time purely as a private citizen. And my philosophy is that, and, and I must, I'm saying this with some degree of pride, I have never asked for positions ever in my life. But I always believe that um, we need to do what we can, uh, because I think this, this, the, the turnaround of this country has to happen through private efforts, by and large.
and the government must follow those private letters rather than the other way around. I hope you can read, you know, what uh, Lalitha had said, you know, that, you know, it's just, you know, he's always never lost for words. It's always very frank, you know, more frank than perhaps, you know, you and I put together, <laughs> you know, very, very interesting. You know, there are so many, you know, with all that, I can't see that, with all that knowledge, experience and brilliance, don't you think he was... And still, he's allergic to most of our legislators. Yeah, of course, he is. Hope at least one of them is listening to this. As I said, I think they are busy lining their pockets. Wow. Uh, it's the truth. You know, I mean, that's that's the absolute truth. You know, and nobody will listen to. You. I mean, I mean, as you rightly said, we got the human resources, people like you, to guide guide this nation. But nobody wants to listen to you. You rightly said that you speak the truth and you are victimized. You know, this is where we are, you know, the where this country is heading, unfortunately. I hope somebody will listen to you. And people are talking about what a diverse, uh, multiple talented personality you are. We spoke a lot about economics in a time I never realized the time has passed so quickly. There's one other aspect that I I I failed to touch upon, apart from all these knowledge, you know, the economics and your know, public speaking abilities and you know, being an entrepreneur and you know, past cricketer, you are absolutely brilliant musician. Where the hell did that come from, mate? You know, but, you know, I I I know that you you play multiple instruments. You know, just not. You know, I must tell you the story. Skip. You remember that Roy Tapera tried to break the guitar that you brought from USA while you were, I think, you were traveling up to Kandy to play Trinity in the train. <laughs> And and Rohita was, you know, like all the time wanted to play the guitar. You did not give it to you did not trust Rohita. Then this, you know, the foreigner got into our our cabin and he almost, you know, remember that the incident that you I think you loved the guitar more than the bat. Right? Maybe, maybe. <laughs> no, it, it's just that I I mean I was lucky to be born into a musical family on my mother's side. My grand uncles and my grandfather, you know, they used to have a shot of Arak and every other Sunday or once a month on a Sunday, they used to sing around, sit around and one played the piano, the other played the mouth organ, the mother played the piano accordion. So I used to watch and learn. And uh, music is, has, has a, is, is, is really a very logical um, thing. And, and, and my being good in mathematics, I was able to pick, pick it up and I played by ear. So that was piano and mouth organ. But, you know, maybe nobody knew about this, but my first guitar chord was taught by Siddharth Vettamuni. Wow. Uh, yes, he still has, he still has one of the best voices you you can imagine, and uh, even though Siddharth is older than me, so he and I uh, uh, used to ask the freshers of the team when we used to travel to Kandy and uh, you know Gaul or whatever to find in which carriage there were the nicest looking girls, and, <laughs> and we we all go to that particular carriage and and play guitar. So so guitar was more for for the purposes of enjoyment. But I'm I'm self taught and I I, I don't consider myself you know a great musician it's purely a hobby but what what made me write music was loneliness and boredom when i was in university in the us um, i couldn't afford to come back on every holiday so you sometimes have christmas holidays i'm alone in the dormitory and all these thoughts used to come to my head and i started writing a few 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 songs but uh, i haven't done so since 93 and and i keep saying uh, the reason that I didn't, I mean, I met my wife, I've been happily married for many years. So, so when there's less trauma in your life, you, 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 you know, you just don't uh, write that much. But one, one thing I must say that is music was also a form of expression. I, I became friends with the, the band members of a band called Alien Accent. That's right. And yeah. Alien Accent. And, and we wrote protest songs. Um, when R Richard DeSouza was killed, my uh, in 1991 or two, my sister wrote a poem, and uh, I had this tune in my head, and then I took that poem and wrote a song called "Loss of Innocence," and that is a song against state-sponsored terrorism, uh, because that's what it was. Um, and I sang this song even while uh, President Premadas was alive, uh, and I said, and, and and one and this was the time where the you know JVP insurrection was happening. And I got letters saying, Dilan, thank you, because my, my brother himself was killed in a tire. You know, as you know, there's a, there's a, there's a verse called, don't, um, uh, don't waste that tire, put another body in the pile, right? Mm -hmm. Because we were young enough to see what was going on both in the North and the South. Um, and uh, it, it helped us 
get over some of the sadness we felt in a situation where Sri Lankans were killing Sri Lankans. Um, so it was really an outlet for uh, one's inner frustrations. And, but it's also a panacea. I mean, I mean, it's again, it's a good drug. I mean, there are bad drugs. Music can be therapeutic. Um, music can train a mind to think logically, in my view, uh, just as much as uh, as uh, Sunil was talking about, uh, you know, meditation. It's, it can be also a form of meditation. So, so it's, a, it's just a hobby. I mean, uh, I, I just play for, play to myself now. I have a small little music. Group. You were never taught. You were never taught music. You said that you are self self taught. So, so what I play is entirely self taught. Uh, I I did go for music lessons for two years, but I have forget, forgotten what it was. I, I quit at ten or eleven years of age. Yeah, I happen to know one of your bandmates. I think DK was a good mate oh, yes. of mine. Yeah, yes. Husni. But I think it was a three piece band that you know you guys. Yeah. It, yeah. Yes. It's very, very similar to what you say that, you know, that, that, that had a very distinct uh, sound to that band. It's not like a normal cover band or whatever you, you sang your originals and came from a very, very special place. You know, that uh, I, I hope one day you guys will get together. I haven't seen you guys in concert probably. We, we, haven't, we haven't performed for about 10, 11 years, but whoever's listening, please Google, I mean, on YouTube, Alien Accent, you can still uh, see some of the live uh, remastered recordings. I, sh I will. Yes. So, you know, in our old age, we are we are remastering our old tracks, and who knows? I mean, you know, the thing is, we didn't do it to make money. I mean, all of our charities, we never made money. Our, all our concerts, and and usually even you know they were you know for charitable purposes. Uh, but it it was an era where we had things to uh, sing about and talk about, where the country was in a in a in a going through a serious conflict. Um, I mean, you l just listen to it. There's a song called Tiriaya Bay. Uh, Suresh wrote that. Brilliant lyrics. Uh, and this is world-class music. You know, I mean, that's that's what's amazing about the talent in this country. And also, we were, I think, the first band to bring together musicians from so many different walks of life. Anthony Surendra played mandolin. Uh, Ratnam Ratnadure played uh, tabla. Uh, Jananath Varako recorded did his percussion, you know, and, and so it was a mixture of different ethnicities, different musical backgrounds, and we were the first to create what is called a folk fusion sound, and I was not the creative force, Suresh and DK were, but I, so I come back to again cricket. It was really a case of talent management is what I did, because I understood a bit about cricket, uh, so music, and that's the same thing I was trying to do with cricket. I mean, I understand management, I understand a little bit about the sport, so you need to bring those management skills along with your understanding of the technical aspects of the game or the music to nurture talent. That's what we have to do now in our old age, right? Is nurturing the remarkable talent in this country and that's traditionally the role of a government. But if the government is not doing their job in certain areas, you know, the private sector and private sector capital needs to do it. You're right, you know, that the private sector has you know, kept our economy for over the years, you know, they have you know, even to civil war and, you know, whatever, you know, that, you know, they have been the driving force, which people don't realize. And I hope, you know, they become stronger. And that what, you know, like for some Sumila, I said, you know, that in my last uh, podcast, how we played cricket, because there were companies at that time, you know, if I'm, if I remember, you know, from Maharajas and to Browns, Ceylon Tobacco, they employed top athletes and they gave us time to play cricket. If not, the cricket would not have been what is to, what cricket is today, or we would not have become a you know, world World Cup winning team. But now you see that cricket, yes, the, rightly you know you gave a good example. You know what uh, Champaka Ramanayaka told you that you know he was making more money in cricket and the companies basically that entire mercantile structure collapsed. And uh, the second tier cricketers are finding difficult to find employment. So it's a big problem, Skip, you know, one day that you get into, back into cricket administration, that is something we perhaps will have to address. How we look after the, the upcoming cricketers, because, you know, they, some of them are really, really struggling. And I must tell you, in case that, you know, you get back into management, that is one project, which I have spoken to Mr. Andre Tenakon, and hopefully that, you know, he will come on my show, he will explain more. I wanted to have a, a pension scheme for the cricketers in the 70s era, who played up to 96 and I, I perhaps you know that you know what happened to Mr. Daya Sahabandhu you know at his funeral there were hardly any people 
you know, just, you know, at the time of, you know, his cremation, you know, that there were very few people and, you know, and likewise, it's just that, you know, Daya is no longer with us, but there are so many other senior cricketers who are seriously struggling economically. And you know that I was talking to last year that, you know, the, you know all the other countries, India, Pakistan, England, Australia, once you play for the country, they have a system in place that their national cricketers are looked after. Not not fancy salaries, but just basic basic salaries that you know these people live in with dignity. You know that they don't have to beg. You know, you know they have given their life to sport. And I hope you support me one day that we need to take this forward. Have this you know pension scheme for the cricketers. Cricket board has, and as you rightly said, they have sufficient funds. They are just you know spending it unnecessarily, and they could you know reinvest in the cricketers who are given so much for the sport and i don't know i mean that's my thought and and there's one guy he's going on and on about you know that he's talking about you know see say please ask this question from tilan what the current state of nanotechnology and its future to the globe um, okay i'm not a scientist but uh, a few months ago i think last year in september october i was uh, I got a call from Mr. Mahesh Amalin and Nishara Nanakar asking whether I'd like to be chairman of Sri Lanka Nanotechnology Institute, Slintech. I did my research and again, it's a voluntary position I'm holding. I was asked to turn it around. So, um, so I brought in a new CEO, uh, changed the leadership and uh, the, the, the potential in our scientific community. I mean, for example, uh, things like graphene. Uh, you know, slow release fertilizer. Uh, there's so so many things that we can do to improve the productivity of the agriculture sector. So, I don't want to go into the science of it, but uh, uh, the what I'm trying to do is that looking at monetizing. I think there was a question earlier. Some of the patterns that Slintech has uh, got over the last 10, 11 years, uh, and. Uh, 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 I'm hoping that, you know, Graphene will start making money soon. Uh, there's a joint venture that Slintech has entered into uh, in, 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 in high high level graphene manufacturing. Um, so I, I again feel that, uh, again, like in the case of the country, Slintech actually should hopefully work because we have dynamic private sector board members and public sector board members. And that's to me the best combination. Uh, in order to ensure that science is not done for the sake of science, but it's commercialized for the benefit of benefit of all. So let's see. It's still early days. Um, uh, let's see how 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 Slim Tech does. Brilliant, excellent. You know, that's uh, one last final question that you know you I wanted to ask. I was told, like Sunilaya, that you know you not to the same same extent that you know where Sunilaya is. You are gradually but steadily embarking on a very spiritual journey with all what is happening is that how you keep your sanity or keep your focus and how does that work i mean one way i do is you know always try and maintain my balance by associating the right type of people um and as i mentioned earlier what is most important to me is the purity and the integrity of mind, right? So I tend to, yes, I have started, I have not started, I do small level meditation, not the deep meditation that my wife does a lot more than, than, than I do. But I am on a path to really to both uh, reach that balance in life where between my mental well-being to physical well-being to my the stimulation I get from leading people who are now younger than me to do something good. So it's it's a you know life is about again as I was mentioning choices and also about balance. Um, so probably as I get older, I will have to let go of some of the, 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 the those three things and focus more on the spiritual side. And gradually, my my plan is to gradually hand over the company to my team. Uh, and then as far as obviously, probably I'll play cricket for another two, three years. Let's see how it goes. Uh, recently, also, I pulled a muscle after a long time. <laughs> uh, and yeah, so 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 I, I try my best to keep that sense of balance. And, uh, you know, I don't drink. Uh, my wife makes sure that I, I eat well. Uh, she's become vegan. So, uh, so that's also important. 
Is that the secret secret to longevity? You know, the, how, that's how you keep your good looks. You know, that you know that uh, um, that apart you have from sl slowed down the aging process. Apart from coloring my hair, not much. I mean, I I, I age everyone else, like everyone else. <laughs> but uh, uh, but I I think it's um, you know it's how you lead your life. I I I think. I mean, I again follow the principles of my father. I I still remember what he says. Puta, if you're Climbing, if you're going up two floors, climb the stairs. Don't take the lift. I still do that. Uh, so I try to be at, as active as possible. Uh, I, as I mentioned earlier, have zero taste for anything that is alcoholic. I can't even tell the difference between a good wine and a bad wine. So occasionally I do sip a glass. You don't know what you're missing in life, Skip. Yeah, maybe I'm missing something. I don't know, but... Uh, but it's really, really, I mean, physical and mental well-being is really the most crucial aspect of uh, living in a, in, a, in a sort of a content way. Uh, I mean, yes, there are, you know, challenges and, and, and certain pitfalls that, you know, come across you. I mean, things sometimes don't work according to plan. You get disappointed, you get dejected. Uh, and as... Uh, was mentioned one of the best bhavanas you can do is the Maitri Bhavana. I mean, somebody might do some something wrong. Try your best not to get angry. I mean, you just uh, uh, look the other way. But at times you can't, when, especially when I see somebody being unreasonable to somebody else, I, I do to, <laughs> tend to intervene. Uh, so that's, that's the point. I mean, choose when to intervene. Uh, and... Uh, do what you think, do, do what is right uh, by yourself and uh, your family and, and, and your country. I, I, at the beginning of our chat, you know, we, I mentioned that Anton, I hope you remember, Anton had a band called Jade, if you, if you remember, and he was a top musician. And Anton migrated, you know, I think Anton is somewhere in Philippines, and, you know, he says, mate, it's way past midnight but i'm still glued listening to you guys you know so good to have you anton and 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 once again must say all those people the numbers did not change you know the first time i've been doing this for a while i i to so see that so many people listening and it's not easy that you know we have been talking almost you know one hour 40 40 minutes and for people to sit and listen to a podcast i think you know we perhaps would have you would have done a lot of good not me you are the one who did the talking and uh, for people to be to be glued onto the screen, listen to us, and you know that that's been really, really amazing. Skip, you know, before we before we go off, and you had a you you had something you want to pass a message on to our youth of this country that you know what are your parting thoughts, you know, which you are talking about. Um, really, it is about continuous self improvement. My view that I've said from so many years, seeing the good, the bad, and the ugly that that gets thrown at you, improve yourself and create what I call pockets of excellence within a sea of mediocrity. Right. So that's what I that's been a philosophy in my life. Whatever I've done in my life in a small way, I may have run an organization, or I may have taken up a sport, or a or 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 some, playing an instrument. Um, it is a case of continuous improvement of, of uh, yourself. Uh, you know, you may have, I mean, I certainly have made mistakes in the past. I may have done things, I, 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 I have done things I regret. But uh, over, 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 over the next period you know, in life, uh, I have generally adopted the principle of creating and surrounding myself within that sphere of excellence that I can control because that's the only way I can look the other way from the mediocrity that's around uh, all of us. So that's my message. Keep improving and don't fear competition because we have to move away from being dependent on handouts, succeeding on the basis of whom you know and what you know. And I want to pass on this message even to parents who are listening. Don't ever cross that line of show, you know, putting your child through something that where you use favoritism. And, and, and I've, I've, one of the causes, I mean, again, I'm so sad at what has happened at Anand the Cricket. 
But what I have heard about Anand the cricket over the last five to seven years, I mean, last year we lost 75% of our matches. But it was inevitable with what has been going on. Their parents are interfering with the selection of the, of, of the team. I've, some years ago, I, I was told with, by a parent with tears in her eyes that the coach and the captain had asked for a bribe. I mean, come on, this is, we, we have produced more test cricketers than any other school in the world. So let us go back and try and see what we can, in, in the sphere that we have, live with integrity and, 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 and not all can play cricket, not all, uh, you know, uh, will, will get a place. But accept the fact that if you don't deserve a place, then, then that's it. Um, so, so, so again, I, I, I'm sorry if I'm rambling on, but, but live in the way that you would want others to treat you and just focus on being your own center of excellence. What thoughts, you know, I'm so grateful, Skip, you know, it's, you know, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I, I should, I should, you know, my, my regrets, you know, if I, if I was, I feel if I was pestering you or forcing you to have this chat, but I so many people told me that you have so much to offer, that you know that your wisdom, that you know you need to share with people. I think lots of people who have not heard this side of yours, you know, most of them who's listening to you probably they know you as an outstanding cricketer who probably should have played for Sri Lanka, but you know they knew that you are outstanding, you know. You know that when it comes to your professional life, you know how great you are. But then I think this is the first time on an open forum that people had the opportunity actually listening to you and and listening to your thoughts. You know, most valuable thoughts. And uh, once again, I hope I did not mess up your Friday evening. You know sure. that you know you could. You know. <laughs> so that, I, I, uh, wa I want to thank everyone for the wonderful comments. Even yesterday, Charit, when you said it, I didn't realize that I was as relevant as people seem to think I am. Uh, and, and I very much appreciate the lovely comments that I'm reading on the right-hand side of the screen. Yep. You know, it's amazing. You know, there's so many good comments. And, you know, that's exactly what I said. You know, that uh, people didn't realize or didn't know who who real Tilan Vijay Singh is. You know, that, you know, that's... Uh... Once again, Skipper, uh, hopefully I shall see you, you know, at training. I should, you know, I should, I should, you know, like start training, you know, to be, you know, in par with you, you know, I know that, you know, that you're super fit. My fitness is doubtful at the moment as, you know, so many injuries and hopefully I can grow some, grow some hair and, you know, put some color. Unfortunately, but anything won't grow. <laughs> Unlike you, you know, just perhaps in a change of lifestyle, you know, it may, it may, it may, it may do some good. I don't know, but uh, always that, you know, you are, you are, you are, you are, you are my senior. Uh, you inspired us and you backed us. And uh, I think, you know, I asked this question from Sunil Iyer those days. You know, we always, I always thought that when you, when you're looking back at Anand the Cricket, you spoke about the current scenario at Anand the Cricket. Uh, everybody thought that the, only the elite played cricket at Anand. You mentioned people like Priyanka, Saniviratna, and you, Siddha Vettamunis, and Seranayakas. And, and I think you, perhaps you guys, People like uh, Mr. Lionel Mendes, P.W. Perez, Andrew the Polono, which has changed that culture, gave us an opportunity for us to come and you know, play cricket and change the whole uh, scenario, you know, what's happening at Anand the Cricket. We took it to different levels. And to see that, you know, Anand the Cricket is, you know, that, you know, it's absolutely in, in dumps. And I would say that I think I'm not even sure. I, 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 I came out of the... Are you in the cricket committee? I came out of it, uh, Skip. I was in the cricket wing some years ago, but not involved any anymore. Um, yeah, so I'm out of it. I think you know Kushil is back. I hope you know they can put things in order, and you know what to see that you know the the school back in a way it belongs at least. I think we play division cricket. I think it's a long, <laughs> long journey to get back to division one cricket, which is shocking. That uh, Suresh, what made him join Tamil Union? And if I know, he lived close to Tamil Union. Not because of any other. Oh, no, no, it, it was my father who wanted me to join, and it's been the best decision uh, that he he took. I, I must tell you, sorry, one one story. Yeah. Uh, seven uh, Saint Peter's on the match. I got heckled. Hello, Tilan, Mukunda, Demulunda, Gahan. So 
so I was, you know, quite hurt, and I went and asked my father. I would have been 16 years old. Right. My father gave me a history of the 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 Tamil singular history, and said, at the end of the day, we are all one. We come from the same DNA. Absolutely. And I can't remember all, all of what he said, and I it never bothered me. And I, as I mentioned earlier, I I was the catalyst that brought in a, a whole host of single uh, players into the club but unfortunately ju after july 83 i was in university at the time that club was burnt badly by the single mobs despite nine out of the 11 players being singalese uh, and uh, you know it's uh, that's that's who we have been as a as a country but i can say this honestly cricket music all of these are great unifiers you know i mean if we can you know, take that example of how and why people need to make case studies. We won the World Cup. It is because we put aside our differences. There was a meritocracy. There was good administration. There was a minister who made sure that this talent was counted from wherever in the world. There was tactical brilliance. You know, so that's, that's we've got to learn from uh, what worked for us. Otherwise, we won't evolve as a nation and a people. It's no point having taglines saying, you know, one nation, one team, and if we don't, you know, practice what we preach, you know, that's what we need as a nation, I think. You know, we need to walk the talk. What do you reckon, Skip? You know, that, 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 yes. at the moment, you know, it's, it's all talk, nothing, you know, that's nothing happening. I hope, you know, the, it'll change. And sincerely, I hope that you are given your due recognition and... And that I'm, you will be. You, you I'm, happy you will be. I'm, I'm happy where I'm happy where I'm at. I re, re, all the recognition I wanted, I got it before I was 40. That was a bit too much, but let's see. I mean, uh, if I get the opportunity, I'll. I'll and it depends. I mean, you, at the moment, I'm not. You, you you keep saying it. You know, do you? I think you have you have you know deep down. I have a feeling that you know you want to lead this nation one day. No. No. <laughs> well. I think you should. I don't know. I'm sure that all those people who are listening, I think, you know, I can't think of you know, a better person, you know, especially at a time we are looking for leaders to lead us. I think you are a, you'll be a great candidate. Let, let us market it. Let's bear that in mind. You know, this is probably the first step that you take on a long journey and we'll be behind you. I'm, I'm sure that all those people who are listening, you know, they will all back you. And I think, you know, you're the right person to lead us to, you know, to greater heights, you know. People, as my former Skip said, always keep raising the bar. And thanks for your time and your participation, your contributions. And one, one other thing that uh, it's actually this whole podcast, uh, Skip, I must tell you that it's an idea of another Anandian, a classmate of mine. The, he's the one who encouraged me because at one point I was doing it, you know, I thought, ah, it's like, you know, that you were playing cricket without you know, any purpose. And, and Champa come and says, uh, mate, though I, I, I'm, not, I'm staying with you, I got you know, more money in the bank than you, know, you are. <laughs> you know, that's... I thought it's a waste of time, but then I started, you know, that you know, I met good people online and, you know, people like you, Sunil Laya, kept on inspiring me and, and everyone who's listening and, you know, that every, my numbers are growing and I'm enjoying it. And you said that whatever I do and try and raise the bar, as you like, you said, enjoy what you do and keep doing good things. Hopefully good things will happen. And once again, thanks to everyone. It's a Friday night. I, you know, have a great weekend and... Thanks to thanks for listening. You know that. Are, are you a rugby fan? Just to quick, quickly before we wind up. No, you're not. You're it doesn't not. have the it doesn't have the beauty and the grace of cricket. <laughs> in, my, in my in my view, in my view. Oh my God, that's a big statement. And you know all those rugby boys, you know who are listening, you know won't agree with that. I think it's a you know, great sport. I love it. You know, it's one of my regrets, by the way, that I didn't have the physique to you know play rugby. Although I always loved it. Looking forward to it. It's I think. Just to tell you something, I am very skeptical about uh, professional sports at the moment. What is happening? I'm sure you know you know I'm, what I'm talking about. A rugby union. I'm not talking about rugby league. I think it's one sport that there is still, you know, that as a sport has evolved and you know it's another level. Skip, you know, that if you really see it, and I think it's played for the right reason. It's a great spirit, and mm -hmm. if you understand the sport, it's ultimate sport, you know, it's a no disrespect, no disregard, you know, no comparison against cricket. Love it. <laughs> looking forward to it. And and I hope you are looking forward to, I hope we'll have better weather. Sri Lanka playing Bangladesh, you know, your thoughts, you know, like it will be another blockbuster like the Afghan one, you know. 
let's hope for the best that we better side with now that we spoke about what what you thought about that uh, did you know about that net and rate you know how the game comes to that how the game was decided sorry which what one was the afghan afghan sri lanka game there was there was you know utter confusion at the end the it said that, that there was stipulated target but you know the afghans fell two runs short at the end of 37.1 overs but then the scenario changed the goal post shifted and net run did the game was not over so so it actually the the afghans could have won the game at the 38.1 had they got a six in five balls you know the entire net run rate yes there's not it's not rocket science you know it's net run rate but it's another subject that we need to discuss in detail which i i i have decided to write to icc the rules have to be clear because you know that you have played the game and you know the, i don't think the cricketers and coaches minds are uh fix that way that you know to cater to fit changing scenarios every ball and you say 37.1 the game over and that's the way it should be it cannot be 38.1 you know that's uh just have a look at it what transpired at the game it's very interesting you learn as you rightly said then as as sportsman let, as humans, let, you know? let bygones be bygones <laughs> all right sir but only thing is we need a change of rule and we need clarity on the rule and that's my that's point true. you know that's everybody knows it's yeah. all on the same page so there's no speculation especially when it comes to a uh, qualifying important game like that you know there are no ifs and buts so keep it simple keep it clean that that's that's all what i'm saying once again sir thank you very much thoroughly enjoyed your company and didn't feel the time moving in almost 2 hours i've been talking to you and i think you know once you are in that groove you don't know how long it takes so you don't feel it and you know just uh... thank you so much for having you you know that's for for agreeing to be on the show and thanks to everyone that you know who was with us the last 2 hours and take care of yourselves and have a great weekend and and hopefully we, we shall see you on another chat inshallah in time to thank come you. thank you sir yeah bye bye take care everyone